Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Land of Empires. This is El Spectro, and today I have a fairly interesting battle、uh, to showcase. And this was a little unexpected. And this is the battle between、uh, King of Fighters on the bottom versus War from Server Six on the top. Now I'm not quite sure what server King of Fighters is, but they are from a much newer server than War. Originally, War. Uh, controlled this area. They had this area pretty much on lockdown. Although they didn't have many castles placed in this area, whereas King of Fighters, they were kind of pushed back, pushed back right next to the gate. So if we zoom out here, we can see the remnants of War's territory next to King of Fighters, and they've been pushed back quite a lot from the gate area, and they actually were pushed back. Prior to the reset today, from this area to shrine, before there were a couple war members here, but all the territory around this area was controlled by war. And now, I think war kind of just slept on their butts、um, prior to the reset, and King of Fighters took the chance to to push to take back the territory and push war back to around this area. Now, I think. Joe Zero realized what's happening, and now he is trying to fight back. And what War needs to do is to, I believe, what they're trying to do right now is to, well, they have to kick this member first and foremost. And to kick this member, they need to control this tile. So we can see that Joe is capturing this tile, but I think they are too late because they there are currently nearly a hundred marches in here. And a hundred marches will burn about twenty thousand every five minutes. Now the best chance War has is if Joe Zero has a lot of reinforcements, and they can burn this castle down within the next ten minutes or so. And they also have to account for the possibility that KOF no longer has the Shield Alliance skill, because keep in mind this skill. Can be used in the Battle of Disorder to give all your members a shield for 15 minutes, and with that shield, I think King of Fighters, honestly, they already have secured victory. So while we can see that Joe is still kind of trying to take this tile, I no longer think that there's anything they can do. So they actually have already started burning this member. Now they really need to prioritize and really put every single bit of their army. On top of this member, and I don't really see that happening right now. So I think they might have already given up all their options, or maybe a majority of their members were just simply too far away from this area. And if I were War, I would ask my members to teleport immediately to this vicinity, because once this member is burned down, if I can do it quickly enough and catch KLF off guard, maybe they forget about the alliance skill, and. They will be able to control this tile within the next fifteen、uh, minutes or so, hopefully, and be able to send marches into what is being burned right now, which is about a hundred marches. So I would say they have optimistically about a fifteen to twenty minute window where they can possibly make a difference. But I think it is honestly already too late. So we will. I will be watching what goes on here, but Joe does not appear to be sending any more marches against this person. So they have captured that tile now, and we can see Joe is sending marches on top of this castle now. Now the benefit of this castle is that it has way lower、uh, total durability. We can see that it only has twelve thousand. I mean twelve hundred seventy durability. So this can be burned down within. Five minutes,、uh, if they are committed enough. But I really don't see. Let's check out where they actually all are because I'm a little bit confused right now, in the lack of reinforcement from war members towards Joe Zero. This guy is trying to reinforce from ages away, and it's not being very useful. But besides that guy, I don't really see any other reinforcement. So overall. This is a bit surprising to me because, although Joe can personally bring burn this down, it will be very hard for him to、uh, deal with reinforcements that other people send 
on top of his marches, because he will have to continuously reinforce and reinforce once again. In order, you can see King of Fighters. They know what they're doing. They are kicking Joe's marches out, and there's nothing Joe can do about it because he is solo here. He needs uh, his second best member, Young OG. And a couple, at least a couple other members, to just start start stacking strong marches, because as as strong as Joe is, and he is very strong, this strength isn't really well reflected in the Battle of Disorder. If I have a very good march, two of my marches will be able to counter one of his marches. So he cannot really pull his weight in the Battle of Disorder, which is really a uh, kind of a numbers game, a, a game of numbers, army size, and good team compositions as well as heroes. And I think this is really a lost cause unless he really gets help from uh, his team members, which is really not happening right now. Um, I don't know. I, I really don't know why they're reinforcing from so far away. They still have territory here. Um, this is, well, this is all controlled by Joe Zero, like uh, no, Noak, Noak, Noak G, Ufasa. Like these people, they are all supposed to be coming here. Poppy. Biggles. Like this is the call to arms for war. And unless they can burn this down within the next five minutes. I mean, within the next 10 minutes ish. There's really not much they can do. Although this is, of course, assuming that the King of Fighters doesn't know about the Alliance Shield, which is they probably know about it. So <laughs> it's really already a lost cause. But we'll see this play out. And if there's anything interesting, uh, we'll commentate on it. And to um, if any, in case anyone's interested in our position versus server 39, I mean versus server 47, which is bound by blood, and this is the uh, this is the alliance we got matched against in area two. Unfortunately, we were not able to overcome them, even though we secured uh, a fairly good position early on in the fight. And I'll showcase that later, but for now, we will just uh, keep watching this because this is the most interesting thing that's going on right now. And it's I think it's overall interesting to see how things like this play out. Um, I, know, I know a lot of us may fall into this kind of situation, especially this Disorder Monument in particular. It is very interesting how how different Disorder Monuments, there are three Disorder Monuments in a Battle of Disorder in area two because there are three area twos and the balance across all disorder monuments is different not only in terms of the distance between the disorder monument and the two gates i'll showcase that later but also in the territory around them we can see with respect to this territory there are major choke points here to the left and on top so if you are an alliance, either pushing from the top or pushing from the bottom, you can choke the top out from this area. Or if you're pushing from the top, you can choke your alliance, I mean your opponent alliance, in this area. So that they will have to go all the way around here and push towards the middle, which makes it much more difficult. Of course, if one side is significantly stronger or more active than the other, then, yeah, they, then they can just slowly push you out. Because... There's three days to do it after the moment Area 2 opens from the opening of the shrine, or I should say Disorder Monument. You have 72 hours to do whatever pushing you can. And I think that is ultimately what makes the overall playing field rather balanced. If you were only given one or even two days, I think it would be quite imbalanced between because an alliance, for example, they may not have a, uh, much activity, but they have quite a lot of farmer accounts. They could just set up walls of farmer accounts and completely shield out the place. But when you have 72 hours, you can do a lot of pushing. And I think although the positioning of each monument is rather imbalanced, um, overall, I think the fact that you have 72 hours to do it makes it more balanced now unfortunately i have to look away from this area for just a moment because there's something very important i need to do and that is complete my uh my energy tasks i need to finish upgrading uh, and i mean reclaiming these two level eight so that i can place myself on top of the leaderboard and there are as everyone knows there are only 30 spots 
for the top tier. And it's kind of hard to talk as I do this, but I'll try my best. Um, but you can see I am six tiles away and I use my low marches to control tiles around me. And this is really a race against time because in the SS bracket, uh, there's a lot of strong people. Everyone's really committed and really active. So my opinion is that the maximum score will be reached within about one to two hours from reset. So right now we are about 30 minutes from reset and I'm doing my best here to reach the maximum. So my plan here is fairly simple. I use my weak marches to just get my surrounding candidate tiles to level seven. Once their protective time is over, I send out my main marches to upgrade them to level eight. And so this I think is the fastest way to do it. Of course, if there's remaining tiles that are level eight and that you can capture, it is the fastest way. But oftentimes your alliance will be pretty active. So people would have taken a majority if not all of the surrounding level seven and eight tiles. Alternatively, you can leave level, level nine tiles open. So you can have, for example, zero level nine tiles captured and you can just capture level nine tiles. I think that is the fastest way to reach the maximum in, in the last few, uh, after reset, I mean. But honestly, I don't think even SS tier is that try hard right now. Uh, there's simply not enough activity uh, for SS tier to be that try hard. So I don't really think that strategy, although it is, I think the best strategy, I don't, I don't think it's necessary. I think this strategy is good enough. Uh, just capture your surrounding tiles and use your strong team to upgrade them to the maximum within one hour after reset. So while my, uh, while my teams are marching towards the targets, let's just quickly take a look at my, my current points. We can see that five people, four people have already reached the maximum. And this is the point uh, we are trying to reach. And once uh, you do reach the maximum, what happens is that you could still get kicked out of the top 30 if somebody decides to control your tile. And that's kind of one of the dangers and why this, this portion of the event is still rather competitive. You do not want your tiles to be taken by your enemy after you reach the maximum point because you will get kicked out. And after that, there's not much you can do besides try to kick out however many people are above you so that you can get yourself back into the top 30. So once I capture these tiles, I will resume my uh, commentary between war and the king of fighters. But before that, I just need to capture three more tiles. So let's speed this up. Do not show me this. And let's check out the remaining level seven tiles we have. And for S and SS rank, this is required, meaning that people will control. I mean, people uh, more than way more than 30 people will reach the maximum. Probably 50 people will reach or, or even 60, 70 people will reach the maximum by reset. If you're in A tier, uh, this is probably less required because people just don't care as much and you can reach the maximum simply I mean, or even reach the top 30 simply by just uh, either going slow, eventually reaching the maximum, or just doing your best and capturing a bunch of tiles. Uh, but these are my last three marches. Let's do the last bit of reclaiming. One, okay, I only, I only needed one there. Let's check this march. One and two, and recall, recall. And my last remaining march, 57 seconds. Let's just take a look back um, here. So they are they are making decent progress actually. Um, and I think King of Fighters will be forced to use their Alliance shield if they want to stop war from being able to attack this monument. <laughs> Although there are 116 marches, I think if they don't uh, pressure this, this will fall within five minutes because one thing, uh, one characteristic about the battle disorder shields, as many of you know, is that the shield itself requires two hours to recharge. And it appears that they, they, they didn't exactly time that very well. So these two accounts uh, have not had their shields recharge in time. Now this guy, he might be just a couple minutes off from his shield recharging. We don't know that. Um, so we will keep an eye on that for now. Let's finish my side of things, one and two. So 
Now I have all level eight or higher tiles, and you can see that my score has reached the maximum. And so on the condition that nobody takes my tiles, I, I, I have secured my position. So with that out of the picture, uh, let's first check my hospital. My hospital is good. Uh, I'm doing batch healing because my hospital is literally full right now. Well, I, I did a good job clearing it, but I need to clear, clear much more of it. Okay, let's just do four hours because I need to go back and commentate. Not this one. Okay, so there are currently about 15 marches in here, which is quite good. So what Joe needs to do right now is you can see that they're sending marches and Joe needs to kind of refresh the strongest marches. And that's what his other members, okay, this is, this is what I was talking about earlier. Young, well, he really needed to, needed to step in like 20 minutes ago, but the fact that he's here right now is very good. So I think they have a chance as long as KOF doesn't activate the shield. I, I honestly, to be safe as KOF, I would activate the Alliance Shield right now because Joe and Young alone, they have enough firepower, I think, because there are 17 people in here. They have enough firepower to burn this down or to protect the remainder burners so that this will go down. Eleven. I, I don't know if KOF even knows about the Alliance Shield. I don't know why they aren't using it. I still think they are very in a very secure, a very solid position, but it's still very risky uh, because this might go down at any point. And the thing about there being 12 marches in here is that for in order for the low troop burners to go on top, meaning that if you want to kick out those low troop burners, they have to land a hit first. So the moment they land a hit, their priority will be set to the top of the stack, meaning that if you get hit, they will get hit first. But in order to get, uh, hit them first, they have to burn down the HP. So the moment you kick them out, it means that they have already lowered. They have already shaved away the HP. So unless you kick them all out, I think this is going to fall. And once, th once this falls, this will belong to war. So I think KOF, the only chance that they have now is they really need to use the Alliance Shield, the Alliance Wide Shield. Like, they, they need to use it within the next minute. Otherwise, I think this is going to burn down. So this is actually turning out to be quite exciting. Um, the other people are arriving now, and this is just kind of a formality. Uh, I don't think those will do anything. Because this is going to burn down in five minutes. But I think this is going to burn down within the next one to two minutes. So right now it's... I mean, assuming KOF doesn't use the shield, it's really a race against time between, <laughs> we, we can see it instantly fell by like 300. So after this, they need to capture this ASAP. Like literally ASAP. Um, uh, someone capture this, please. I hope they know they, okay, here we go. So now they are on a time limit. And I think they will, I think they have enough. I really think that Young uh, arrived a bit too late. Um, I'm not too sure why, but I think they really should have triple committed here. Because even assuming the lowest burn rate of 1, 150 or whatever, this is more than enough to burn like 20,000 in five minutes. Yeah, they have enough time.
So I think this is, um, yeah, rather embarrassing for War. I think they could have done much better in this confrontation. But of course, I don't know their situation. They might have been very busy, preoccupied with something else. Anything could have happened. But I think overall, War should have made a bigger commitment and rather not backtrack like this because obviously it is harder to attack into a defensive position. Uh, KOF had many options to themselves if they wanted to completely stop war. The easiest option, of course, was the Alliance Shield. And yeah, I think war is kind of fuming right now <laughs> because all they can do right now is watch as this burns down to the end and there's absolutely nothing they can do about it. Like, he doesn't even need to push marches out. Uh, this burn speed is more than enough to finish the rest before they are able to capture this tile. So, GG's. But we'll still watch this to the end and see what people have to say about it. And I hope War doesn't mind this going on YouTube <laughs> because obviously I won't, I won't look for their permission to post this on YouTube. But overall, it's been interesting and it kind of shows the dynamics of um, battle disorder combat and why you really cannot disregard your opponent no matter how much weaker they are compared to you. And in these critical situations, uh, I think KOF, I, I still believe that they made the mistake or take the, took the excessive risk of not using the, the Alliance Shield. Maybe they didn't have it for whatever reason, I don't know. But of course, I don't think there's any reason for them not to have the Alliance Shield. Um, and I think overall, War just didn't really commit, even though they were behind. Like, when you are behind, that is the time to really commit. When there is a chance to snag victory back again, you really need to commit. And I don't think they really managed to do that. Uh, Young coming here was, uh, was necessary, but he just simply came too late. And in these situations, it's good to have your alliance's phone number so that you can give them a call in, in case of emergencies like this. But that's the fun of the game. Uh, sometimes the underdog wins, and this is one of those times. So now this is already too late. Um, if it, even if they capture it now, they have more than enough forces to uh, control, I mean, to burn down the remainder of the HP before they can be kicked out. And uh, King of Fighters wins the Area 2 monument. Congratulations to them. And... I had a fun time casting this. Let's take a look at the other monuments. <laughs> yeah, they may not be strong, but they have good activity and good planning, I guess. So in this area, we have Drew versus Soul. Unfortunately, half of Soul left for a uh, secondary alliance. So they are in... They are stuck in B tier right now. And after the reward imbalance, I mean, after the reward rebalance, uh, they are stuck with quite mediocre rewards. So to the bottom side, and Drew controls the monument. And to our side, Bound by Blood will control this monument. And it was uh, quite an intense fight between us and Bound by Blood. So going back to us, as what, what I was saying earlier, we surrounded this monument when Area 2 first opened. And that is strongly attributed to the fact that we were simply closer to the monument. So we built to the monument faster. They were ab not able to stop us. And we were able to surround the monument with our HQ. But because there's a three hour duration between when Area 2 opens to when this disorder monument opens, uh, BBB was able to eventually force us out. And they were able to force us out about about um, 30 hours ago. And wait, no, no, no. They were able to force us out about like 16 hours ago. And so I hope that showcases when an alliance is stronger, the positioning of the disorder monument isn't really that much of an imbalance unless, unless you can somehow like, I don't know, 
I, I don't think it's possible to win against an alliance that is stronger and more active than you are. Now, in terms of participation, uh, it was a big, it was a pretty bloody uh, confrontation. And although I used the whole Valor strategy uh, to summarize what that is, you basically let your troops, you basically do not heal your troops from the hospital. You let them get fed into the Hall of Valor. And that saves you on a lot of uh, healing speed ups, which I didn't really have anymore. So I let my Hall of Valor fill, fill up. And after it's, after it's filled up, you cannot really use the Hall of Valor strategy anymore. So I kind of just had to give up. Although at that point, I didn't really have any healing speed ups left either. If I did, uh, I would have kept fighting, but I was also out of energy, so I couldn't keep fighting. So the current plan is to, yeah, meet everyone in the center. And I don't know how entertaining the center fight is going to be, but we will test how strong Drew is as an alliance, whether we will test them together with the other alliances, BBB, us, and maybe war versus Drew. Or maybe there will be uh, different diplomat, uh, dif diplomatic ties, I'm sorry. <laughs> but I think the center combat this time will be quite interesting. Um, who, who will win the center? I have no idea at this point. But we will see. So I hope everyone enjoyed this commentary. Um, nothing special is going on in the chat. But congratulations once again to the King of Fighters. Right from server... Um, server 56, I think. Yeah, 56. Congratulations to them. And we'll see everyone in the middle. And I will see everyone in my next video. Take care.